Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Cloud ERP podcast. This special edition podcast is brought to you in partnership with the Let's Talk Data podcast. I am your host, Jennifer Frank McGorry. We have a great conversation planned for everyone today. In just a few minutes, I'm going to hand the microphone over to my esteemed colleague, Eric Lossbrook. He's a regional vice president for SAP's customer success in the West. Eric is going to host this session of the Let's Talk Cloud ERP podcast, and I will be back with new stories in just a few weeks. Until then, let's get rolling. Welcome, Eric. Take it away. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Today, I have the privilege to speak to Satya Jayadev, who is the Vice President and CIO of Skywork Solutions. We are going to engage in a dynamic discussion on why cloud and the role of the CIO during a business transformation. But I'm really excited to be able to host him here today, as I know that he's on a phenomenal journey with SAP to the cloud. And uh, he's a, a great leader at Skyworks, working with many executives at Skyworks to, to be able to accomplish this. So, Sacha, can you maybe do a quick introduction of yourself and uh, the journey you're on? Thank you, Eric. Uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you. I'm you know, Satya Jairev. Uh, I'm the CIO for Skyworks. Been with the organization for over five years. And as you mentioned, Eric, it's a phenomenal journey here from a transformation perspective. I just call it transformation. It's no, it's no longer digital. It's as, as a word itself uh, is actually redundant. And uh, Skyworks is a high-performance analog semiconductor player. We are in the we, we call it as we are in the process of connecting people, places through applications uh, which are in the in the you know aerospace, uh, automotive, broadband, uh, infrastructure, and all the way to the wearable markets. Um, as uh, the world continues to evolve, the uh, you know ubiquitous uh, uh, you know connectivity across the world, I think we are the ones that are uh, in the market. We are the one, we are one of the leaders in the market trying to connect people wirelessly. So an exciting space to be in. And what's more exciting is the transformation journey that we have just taken on. Thank you for that, Satya. I really appreciate that. So let's start right at the top. You have been an SAP customer for, for quite some time. You were evaluating your options in terms of your transformation programs, and you landed on a transformation program enabled by SAP S4 Rise. Can you walk us through a little bit sort of the challenges you were facing why you're going on this transformation journey or why you are on this transformation journey and how you landed with SAP RISE uh, S4 in the cloud. Oh, absolutely. So the way that we saw this is was, was actually, uh, we, we broke this transformation in two parts. One is uh, the foundational aspects of the uh, you know, transformation. And the other one was uh, the truly you know, digital or the, the you know, next phase of the transformation that was going to give us the growth that we were looking for. So from a foundational aspect, we started off this journey in 2018, and uh, we started to look at it in terms of how do we make sure that we bring in the right uh, you know, security posture within the organization, and then how do we start building upon the, the you know, network and the you know, infrastructure side of things. So it's been very methodical in terms of how we've seen this, and uh, the evolution has been very phenomenal, has been a, an, an, an awesome path too, because there's a lot of technical debt that we had to, um, uh, you know, reduce. When companies talk about transformation or about data or about AI ML, nobody talks about uh, about the you know data aspects of it. And when we talk about the single source of truth, the actual data aspects of it, we have to start talking about the systems of record, the systems of transaction. So as you peel the onion, you're going to start seeing that. We need to start focusing on on truly foundational elements of of the business, and then we can start getting quickly towards the transformative parts of it. And that's what uh, we've been working on. And and so as we started doing that, uh, we are now at a phase where we thought uh, we are good to kind of start off our S4 journey. And we strongly believe that S4 is going to give us that competitive edge and uh, getting S4 in and then getting to start uh, and starting to look at all of the business processes that we have today is going to be very important for us. And then we start turning things around in every aspect of our business. And that's where uh, the S4 engine is going to take us towards. So truly exciting. And uh, we are really looking forward towards that. So, Satya, you um, obviously went through a rigorous sort of evaluation program before kicking this off. You had to get funding from your executive board, right, to be able to kick such a program off. And I'm curious to learn a little bit more about some of the compelling factors you were able to speak to your CFO about, speak to your CEO about, and your other leaders from a business perspective. Like, what drove them to be able to effectively open the wallet and start investing in uh, the the latest generation of SAP technology? Yeah, no, great question. You know, one thing that I get reminded of is uh, Bill McDermott, uh, the former uh, you know SAP leader, had once said something that was that, that that is still stuck in my mind. 
that you know credibility is earned in drops and lost in buckets so when we started off our foundational aspects of the program as we started to gain some success in those programs those acted as those drops of credibility for us and uh, i think it is good for the leadership also to see that this team can start executing towards those bigger projects and we had a very clear path right we had a clear path from soup to nuts in terms of what we wanted to do first and why this was going to help us towards the larger part of our of our goal and we started to put that together and we started to execute on those and we started earning the trust of the leadership earning the trust of the of the business leaders involved in that like for example if you we were going to be taking uh, s4hana we wanted to say hey we need to shore up our infrastructure we need to shore up our network and our infrastructure because we were very inclined to look at uh, at cloud as uh, as one of those uh, you know delivery models so if you want to make a uh, cloud engineering work we better not have a technical debt that is that is going to pull us down so how do we go and fix that and we went and we fixed that and today we are on the on the cusp of our you know s4 hana uh, you know go live and we feel very confident that what we have put together is going to help us with that the cloud engineering look is you know you know uh, it is looking good and so those drops of credibility is very important when you're selling it to the leadership to say hey, we know what we're doing and we know how this is going to add value to the business and here's what is going to take us there and what got us to a 5 billion dollar company may not get us to being a 10 billion or a 15 billion dollar company so the investments that we're putting in is, is actually paying us off so i think that is what uh, helped us to open doors for the the you know s4 hana uh, uh, you know implementation and uh, so far it's been it's been going well all right well thank you sir sir jeff so you already you did it to this right you already mentioned the word sap cloud erp of course you know when you're deploying sap s4 there's different ways to deploy this you know in an on premise environment or in an erp cloud environment and for you and working with you on the team for for years now it was always very obvious you, you wanted to invest in sap cloud erp can you explain the logic behind why cloud erp um specifically with sap but just focus on the cloud aspect please if you don't mind no well, absolutely i think when we first started looking at, at s4 it was very clear that it was going to be a rice platform for us which is the cloud platform from uh, uh, from sap i'm a very strong believer eric that cios and it organizations should start looking at the business first and then the technology afterwards that's why this is called a transformation and not a digital transformation right and this is also a very important part of change management as well so for us or for me as a cio i want my team to be looking at what can i unlock from s4 hana how can i keep my teams more focused towards unlocking the value of of you know s4 hana and as far as where sap was going to run to me that i i thought s4 hana rice was was perfect because the back end management of you know sap as well as the business continuity and the disaster recovery to me should be a part of uh, what the experts can take care of it sap can do this as a part of their bread and butter and i think you guys focus on your cop- your like you know core competencies and we can focus on ours and that's what uh, this is and this is this is all about how do i channelize my workforce towards uh unlocking the value of uh, the s4 hana engine while the maintenance of sap keeping sap running 24/7 um and looking at sap as uh, a saas engine or a saas model was was what we wanted to do so that i don't have to focus my efforts on keeping my uh, you know s4 uh, or my you know s4 hana system alive uh, alive in sense keeping making sure that we have backups making sure that uh, we do the disaster recovery parts of it which to me doesn't add competitive edge what what adds competitive edge is how can i convert those projects that i have in s4 hana from um, from conception all the way to consumption as quickly as possible so i can focus my effort on that while sap can focus the efforts on 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 keeping my you know s4 hana up and running so to me it's perfect it's it's the it's the best of both worlds and again as as a cio for me i'm actually transferring all of that to sap to keep that aspect of it while i look at i look at the entire value engine or the value proposition of what s4 hana can do to my business so it's it was it was pretty pretty clear for us in terms of how we wanted to do this and so far it's been working uh, you know really well for us thank you sachi i think you mentioned a couple of things that i want to double down on for just a second and we'll get to the functional scope and how you're approaching that in just a minute but before you go there a topic near and dear to my heart is around your people right you brought up your people you want your people to focus on the high impact high value programs and deliver value to the business um versus keeping the lights on so to say 
Now that's important, not just from you know a motivation perspective. It's a, it's the high value stuff. You keep your 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 staff happy. I .e. your retention is probably higher. Is that sort of the reasoning why you're thinking about it in this way? I think it's that was a huge part of it. And the other parts of it is that it helps us to kickstart our uh, our you know transformation journey. We aren't mm -hmm. worried about the infrastructure required to run SAP. We aren't uh, you know worried about. Uh, uh, about how we're going to uh, work on the you know basis side of things and all that. I think it gives us the ability to to you know kickstart right now. It gives us the flexibility in our approach. It helps us to be more agile. That's that's huge for us, and it it helps us to be more flexible to the business changes as well. So I think to me there are numerous wins in in this in this uh, in this process. We're very excited when we when we heard about about Rice uh, precisely for those reasons to say how can I kickstart this as soon as possible. I've I've been through some of these implementations before, and I can imagine uh, the the amount of work that we had to do from an infrastructure network and and from the hardware side of things before we had to start thinking through with the actual implementation aspects of it too. And now it's like uh, we all have uh, our roles to play. We are like truly partners in this, right? I mean, we've got uh, an amazing uh, SI in Deloitte, you know, helping us with this. So truly, it is a it is a partnership of uh, of sorts here and this ecosystem of you know workforce is what uh, we were expecting and combined with rice it makes it very powerful for us that this uh, this implementation can happen really quickly and really swiftly and now we've got uh, divided responsibilities in you know in you know how we we can like you know accomplish this you already mentioned the uh, the role of your system integrator being a fundamental part of this journey of this transformation I personally am involved a lot, of course, with Deloitte, your specific system integrator in this case. The partnership is really, really strong. How do you keep one another accountable, right, in this model? Because SAP, of course, has parts to deliver, Skyworks has parts to deliver, and the system integrator has parts to deliver. What does your sort of governance structure look like in, uh, in the Skyworks specific example? So we, we have a very clear transformation management office where we have a very strong governance program, and we've got a very well laid out path uh, for uh, for uh, you know execution of our transformation projects, uh, we have a program management office. We also have a transformation management office, and then we have an operational office that is actually delivering to that. And SAP uh, is also a part of all three for us, and we have uh, the roles clearly defined how we want to do this and where we want to do this. And uh, and each one of us are, uh, and we have. Uh, steering committees all across the place. We also have executive steering committee, which you're a part of too. And we also have operational steering committees and we have internal uh, groups that are actually executing to those two. So a very strong governance program. And I think combined with a very strong you know, organizational change management process, which is a huge part of that. And uh, I think that's where, um, uh, you know, many years ago, we kind of harped on this model where we wanted, we didn't want just IT to be the change agents for the organization. We wanted the business to become the real change agents because if business becomes the change agents, then there is nothing better than that. And so I think um, you know, we've been uh, trying to get the business to be a big, big part of it. And if you see the model that we have today, it is top down as well as inside out. So the emphasis is on the leadership and the middle management to start becoming those those change agents in driving uh, these uh, you know transformative projects uh, towards uh, towards fruition. Yeah, and that's certainly one thing from my observation. Your partnership with your chief accounting officer, with your chief financial officer, the, the entire finance leadership, and of course also in the in the uh, supply chain side of the house and so on and so forth. It's a really strong partnership. So how do you see your role as the CIO, right? today compared to maybe what you would have played 10 years ago in an SAP program. How has that changed for you? It's changed for the good. It's I think COVID was a huge catalyst in that. I think uh, they, the role of the, of the of the CIO of the CIO has actually metamorphosized into 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 multiple areas, right? Sometimes I see myself as the chief demystifying officer. Sometimes I have to see myself as one of the engineers. Sometimes I have to see one of as as one of the you know operational leaders. So you have to start getting in sync with the business. IT is an organization that's not about technology anymore. IT is an organization that's all about solution shaping. And when you when you talk about solution shaping, that's where I can now connect why rice is kind of helping us with that because gone are, the, are those days when we were busy trying to manage the hardware the infrastructure the connectivity the whole nine yards in terms of trying to run this and now I'm, i have a majority of my folks focusing on 
how do I get value out of uh, out of Ariba or how do I get value out of you know IBP or how do I get value within the within the you know S4 engine? So that's where my team has to start looking at it. My team should be well versed with, with the product so they can now go to the business and then start solution shaping. So my role is now kind of change towards that to say, how do I help the business to start leveraging systems to drive uh, some of their you know, growth initiatives or productivity initiatives and things like that. And that's where you know, effectively using systems helps out with that. And as we start moving more into the AI world, Eric, I think it's going to be important for us to start looking at our data, looking at our single source of truth. And then as you start looking at the data, you want to start looking at our systems that are generating the data. And if you're going to start looking at the systems that are generating data, that's where we're looking at how, I mean, SAP is doing a multitude of things, uh, a multitude of things for us. How do we now start channeling that data to, towards making more AI-based uh, calls on that? And how do we start using machine learning to its, to its full potential? I think the possibilities are endless. And this is a great time to be an IT leader because you are in the middle of the business. You're trying to, uh, to, to look at the variety or, or look at different aspects of, uh, of business. And, and helping them use technology to drive all of that. Yeah, thank you, Satya. I couldn't agree more. Now, if you think about the organization that you are trying to move, I mean, Skyworks is a large organization, right? You're trying to get everybody on board with this transformation program. What are some of the lessons learned maybe that you can share from where we are today? You're about to go live now, right? I mean, yeah. you've done a lot of uh, testing. You have a lot of folks involved on this whole journey. Any sort of lessons learned that you might want to share with the audience here? I think one biggest lesson that I would I would talk about, uh, Eric, is organizational change management. I think that mm -hmm. is a very, very essential piece of any transformation. I think highlighting, especially for the stakeholders, for the people involved in this is, again, what's in it for them before you start talking about the bigger picture of how this is going to change things, right? I think it's important to kind of highlight what's in it for the people involved in this, what's in, what's in it for the stakeholders who are adopting or adapting to these systems and how these systems are going to change the way it is. I think all of that is going to be, um, is going to be very important. And because of the fact that people are going to be the centerpiece of the strategy. And I think uh, we've been paying a lot of attention to that. We've been paying a lot of attention uh, in making sure that uh, that people are truly aware of all these changes. People are truly aware of the big picture, but people are also aware of those one percenters that we need to keep turning on in order to get to that big picture. And finally, I would also add, it's very important to have a very strong governance process. The governance process is making sure that those screws are tightened and uh, you don't have any leaks and you are making sure that this engine is ready to roar. And I think we've paid a lot of attention to that and we've been working towards that. At the end of the day, it's important that everyone delivers in their own roles. And that's where SAP is delivering to what they are doing with the, with the RICE platform and with the product as well. And our SI is delivering to what they have promised in terms of taking us through this whole uh, you know, journey. As an organization, Skyworks is, is, is being agile. We are being informed and we, we understand what this can do for us as an organization. So understanding every single aspect of it is where the you know, secret sauce is. And for me, I've been lucky working for an organization and working with partners such as yourself and with Deloitte and making sure that this all ties in together. It certainly is a great partnership, Satya. And that actually brings me to sort of my final question here, which is what's next in this partnership, right? You're about to go live with S4 rise, um, you'll have the foundation at that point. All the innovation will be sort of automatic at that point because it's a cloud delivered ERP. I guess the question then is so how are you looking at the roadmap from here? I think we are now looking to see what next for us. How can we then start getting more efficiencies in our processes? How can we start adopting uh, the best practice templates that uh, that we have in you know, S4 HANA and, and start turning it on. So there is gonna be innovation happening at the fringe as every single function is gonna look at S4 and say, okay, now that we've got S4, what else can we do on top of it? How can mm -hmm. we change our processes so that uh, we can start uh, utilizing and building upon that? Uh, an example I can throw in here is, is, is MRP. We have MRP today and we'd like to go into MRP live. How do we start using MRP Live? What are the benefits of you know, MRP Live? And how do we then get our business process changed so that we can start getting the true benefits of, of, of you know, MRP Live? So there are many such things that we're already starting to do that. And uh, this is where making the business as change agents comes into play. Uh, we're now asking sourcing folks to start looking into it. We're now starting uh, supply and demand folks to start looking into it. So every single function is trying to do that. So that's why it's, it's truly exciting that we, we feel like the entire organization 
is IT and business in, in, in how we see it. Yeah, I love this, Satya. And actually, that's a great way to, to wrap this up. I want to say thank you so much for uh, joining me at this opportunity to talk a little bit about your journey, the Skyworks journey to SAP S4 Rise. And uh, I really look forward to uh, celebrating uh, your go life very, very soon. And then, of course, for the partnership to extend in the months and years from here on out. So thank you very much, Satya. I really do appreciate it. Absolutely, Eric. Uh, we are uh, you're definitely invited for that uh, in a celebration event. So you know, you know that. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Satya. Thank you, Eric. Back to you, Jennifer. Thank you, Eric. Wow, what a great story. I'm looking forward to following the Skyworks transformation. Thanks again. Also, check out other episodes of Let's Talk Cloud ERP to hear directly from other customers on their transformation journeys. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank the Let's Talk Data podcast for their partnership. We couldn't do what we do without them. Until next time, I am Jennifer Frank-McGorry. Have a great rest of your day.